Do you have an old ThinkPad, MacBook Pro, Dell computer or whatever laying around, unused and actually just waiting for its fate? Well, it has not to end that way. In this video I'm going to show you how I repurpose an old MacBook Pro with a semi-broken display without any battery as part of my home lab. We'll install Proxmox on it and then deploy a virtual machine on it. Let's get started. Okay, first thing to do, boot the machine with the Alt key pressed and select your USB stick. Then select Install Proxmox and then proceed to the installer and look at that screen. That is truly not a nice screen to work upon. Accept the end user license agreement and select the disk onto which Proxmox should be installed. Then we can adjust location time zone settings and provide a password and an email address for the root user. Now we can adjust the name of the machine. I call it PVE-Mac and you can give it a domain name as well. Last thing to do is to review everything and then start the installation. Note down the address which is displayed in the end of the installation process because that is the address of Proxmox's admin website. Done! Okay, first thing to do is to SSH into the machine and to make sure we have all the required repositories defined. Therefore, we open etc apt sources.list and add the Proxmox no subscription repository. We save that and then we open the PV Enterprise list and we comment out the entry there because we don't use any subscription. Now we do a complete system upgrade. After that, we make sure the device is not behaving like a laptop and reboot. Perfect. Now we install sudo to have a dedicated user for working with everything. We open the vsudo tool and make sure that the sudo group is uncommented and then we create our management user. I call that user open tech. The user obviously gets a password and that user gets assigned to the sudo group. Now we create a dedicated admin user within Proxmox. We name that user OpenTech at PUM. That at PUM part is pretty important. Then we create a new group called admin. And in the next step, we define that that admin group has the role administrator assigned for everything. And then we add that group to our currently created user. Now we can open our web front end and log in there and just ignore the error message. We don't have a valid subscription, we know about that. On the left side expand the PVE Mac entry and select local. Here you click on ISO images and upload the ISO image for your Ubuntu virtual machine. After having uploaded that ISO image, we can create the machine. We click on that button and we give the machine a nice name. In the OS section, we select our just uploaded ISO image. Within the system section, we check QEMU agent. 
we don't make any changes within the disk section. Within the CPU section, we define that the machine gets two sockets and two cores on each socket assigned. We define the minimum memory to be one gigabyte and we don't do any changes within the network section. Lastly, we check start after created in the confirmation section and finish the creation. The machine is now getting created and, and once it starts, we can hit the console button to the left. Now we are working with that machine. We start the installation and we define the language to be English. We don't update the installer here, but you can definitely do that. And if you happen to have a different keyboard layout as I do, then you need to change that. Next thing to do is to define the way of installation. We say we install a dedicated Ubuntu server. We don't make any changes within network proxy and repository settings. And we, we uncheck the setup this disk as LVM entry. We then confirm all the settings within the storage configuration, give the machine a name, create a user with a password. And then we decide to install OpenSSH server so we can SSH into the machine. We don't install any additional tools here, we just start the installation. That installation might take a while. In the end, the machine has to be rebooted. And now we can log into our newly created virtual machine. Here we now enable the SSH server. And we install the QEMO guest agent. After that, we execute a complete update, the machine will reboot, and we then can read out the IP address. With the IP address, we can now SSH into the machine and we can now simply start using it. And the best use case is obviously to execute NeoFetch. And so did I. So, what do you think? Is it a good idea to repurpose an old MacBook Pro, an old ThinkPad, an old Dell computer as part of your home lab? Is the idea of running Proxmox or Unraid a good idea? Let me know in the comments below. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell, since it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time around. And don't forget, let's make the world a better place. See you later. Take care. Bye.